We're going to talk with Corey LeCue. He was up in uh, in Oregon there, and I uh, want to find out what makes this man tick. Well, I was on my way to Oregon. I was in, in Bunkerville in 2014. The cold, the cold prevented me in part from making that uh, trip. So this is Corey, and uh, we got uh, Tom, Tom Lockevar is tuned in. Tom Stewart, Lockevar Stewart. You remember Tom? Did you meet him there in Oregon? I can't remember. Like I said, I had to see pictures. I uh -huh. didn't, didn't get a whole lot of names. Um, get to know everybody's name, memorize that kind of thing. But if I saw pictures, I'd probably could tell you if I remember or not. All right. Well, let's let's talk about you, and uh, probably keep your volume up if you can. Or I should have probably plugged the mic in here, but yeah, here we are. Uh, back in Vegas uh, last week in Denver for uh, uh, Bruce Doucette's trial. And uh, good fellow there. Uh, I've just met Corey, and uh, I, I look at his name, and of course it rings familiar. A lot of folks in Oregon I didn't know, but uh, let's let's talk about your background. Some uh, you were in the military. Yeah, I came from a military family background. My grandfather had served in World War II, basic airborne. Um, my other grandfather had been a B-24 pilot, uh, was killed. Uh, my dad had served. Korea, Vietnam, and a lot of my cousins, great uncles, World War II and back. Long, so, long family history yeah, there. I started out in Civil Air Patrol, which is kind of like Air Force ROTC, at the age of 12, and uh, really liked it a lot, and uh, got a lot of good knowledge about how the military works and operates, so um, then uh, got into the Army and Airborne School, the second Airborne, I loved it, and parachute jumping and all that kind of stuff. And, how the... Just 18 or yeah. fresh in? Yeah. yeah. Just, and how old are you now? Oh, I'm 40. I'll be 48 April 17 years. And, yeah, it goes back far, farther and deeper. Um, Do you feel like America turned her back on you? Or you feel betrayed in any kind of way? For up there? Yeah, for taking the to stand? To a point. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can actually say, you know, we were promised a lot of support by a lot of patriots and militia groups. And... Very few actually answered the call to show up there. Very few. And, you know, there were so many posts on the social media with Facebook of everybody was ready for Obama to be gone and this and that and just for a whole uh, time for, you know, a whole revolution to start and, you know, turn this country back around with some positive hope and change, not the socialist hope and change Obama was shoving down our throats. And it's just like, you know, America's got to learn, you've got to ante up. The whole 3 percent model came from the American Revolution, only 3 percent of the American population raised up arms against the British to overcome their tyranny. You know, what I've learned about America, this is a sad comment. As long as the average American has his beer and his TV, his NFL Sunday ticket, and his life is somewhat comfortable, he ain't going to lift a finger to help nothing. Yeah, Until smart. his comfort level is so bad, he's in so much pain and stress, and by that time it's going to be too late. Too Far too late. And that's what I've noticed about the, American, the Americans have become so lazy and complacent. Um, what's going around and you see the scandals still uh, with government and it's like it's an accepted thing now no one even cares it's like that's ah, another story no big deal worth it to, is it worth the, the two years and two months has it been that, that you I, just got out I two days two, ago oh, I did two years and a month 25 two, months 25 months and I have no regrets for what I've done Good. never have never will you lose a lot of your uh, your uh, freedoms now by being convicted yeah, I understand. I, you know, I understand all that, and it's just, you know, it, it, it needed to be done. You know, um, you know, we tried every peaceful way, you know, avenue. We 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 filed all kinds of petitions. We you know had it notarized, and we took our grievances to Sheriff Ward, and all of this, and explained to him his duties as a sheriff and kicking the federal government. He has that power, and that authority to kick the federal government out of his county when they're abusing his citizens, like what they did to Hammonds, was just. <laughs> A, a gross misapplication of the law that domestic terrorism yeah. burning some grass to save your home down is not domestic terror yeah. and so uh, you know Sheriff Ward just didn't have the guts to stand for his people that's all there is to it and a lot of it comes down to with, with the federal blackmail oh well you know we won't get your federal funding if uh, you don't go along with it right. and, the, and half the population up there loved us the ranchers all loved us because they've had their struggles and their fights with the government and the BLM and they're per, per, uh, being persecuted and the other half, the sad thing we learned about Burns up there, they had the best economy in Oregon with the logging industry. Yeah, logging, mining, and they, they, 
slowly closed everything yeah, out. Yeah, the liberals destroyed all that, the spawn owl, and all this other environmental crap with them, and, and ruining logging. Then they replaced those jobs with federal jobs. Exactly. Like Bureau of Land Management, park rangers, Department of Forestry, all that stuff. And so half the population up there working for the feds. And the so, other half working to pay yeah. for <laughs> So obviously they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them, so that's why we had a lot of opposition going up there not realize once we found out that half that population, and when we started putting out town hall flyers, second day I was up there, we went and we put flyers in every business up and down Main Street. Me, Jason Patrick, Ryan Payne, and we were trying to organize these town hall meetings. Every one of those businesses were supportive of us and the Hammonds of what, you know, what was going on. Um, I can tell you that for a fact, all the businesses were very supportive of, you know, what was going on with the Hammonds. And then opposition, there was one side, and it turned out to be the son of a judge or something that put up Bundy's oh, go. Grasty. Was that who it was? Probably Judge Grasty, I imagine. I don't recall, yeah. So, but uh, you say there was a lot of support from the folks up there for y'all. And uh, we were talking earlier, you said uh, a lot of the uh, that stuff being tried, trying to be blamed on the Patriots. Uh, oh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah some, I was committing property crimes um, against the little, we had that, that fire marshal, I can't think of his name now. Um, it's all documented and whatnot. We, uh, the fire marshal <laughs> caught the FBI trying to break into the National Guard Armory. They were dressed up as militia. Well, really? you know, yes. They were dressed up in like woodland BDUs, whatever, and, and whatnot. And uh, he was trying to pull them over, I guess, and they wouldn't pull over. And finally, when they stopped on their own, he, he got out of his trucker and went up to them and started questioning them. And they were very evasive, didn't want to admit who they were, what they were doing. And then he got their license plate number, went back and ran it with the sheriff's department, came back undercover FBI. Huh. And so, who, who was that that pulled him over? The fire marshal of uh, Burns, I guess. And he's the one that, he's the guy that quit. Yes, he, quit. He, came to the, he came to the refuge at the front gate, had a big interview, Fox News, CNN, whatever, all the major networks were there, and he explained what he caught the FBI doing and why he couldn't, you know, uh, in his good conscience, basically be the fire marshal with all the corruption going on in the with the sheriff, with Judge Crasty, all this stuff. And he's just like, no, I'm resigning. Um, and, 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 you know, and when that came out, did, did, did it change mass American opinion? No. Yeah. The corruption that we've exposed, especially the Bunkerville case, with that BLM whistleblower, uh, Wooten, yeah. Larry Wooten, and how the judge had him fired to shut him up to they, keep the truth from coming out? No, it was uh, 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 Stephen Myrie who fired him. You know, Myrie and uh, Nadia Ahmed, they were out there in uh, March of uh, 2014. Basically trying to, you know, do the setup, to set up for the takedown, uh, trying to in, entice a criminal case. And uh, as we see, they, they know no bounds uh, as far as their corruption. And I, I met that corruption up in Denver face-to-face -face with the, the prosecutor, um, the robber, Robert Shapiro, and the oh, others. That's funny you bring that name. I was just going to say this. The one thing I've learned to I've learned over the years, especially with uh, the legal system in America, and OJ proved OJ Simpson proved it. If you've got the money to cut your wife's head off and pay ten million for the dream team, you're not guilty. That's right. And you have to understand something. When it comes to being prosecuted either by the federal government or on the state level, you've only got the money to defend yourself. And if you've got the money, you're going to hire a public dump truck. We call them. That's what we call them, public pretenders because yeah. they pretend to defend you. While they go have meetings with the DA and laugh about selling you out. Drinks at, at five. Yeah, they go out there and drink at the country club, and the DAs and the public affairs all get together and laugh about it, how they sell, how, how they sell their clients out, uh, basically. They all and, work for the same entity, the, yeah, the bar. Same paycheck. Yeah. Both getting paid by Judge, the county or state or yeah. feds. So it's basically, if you don't have the money like OJ Simpson to figure some other dream team, you're screwed. And the, and the prosecution, they basically got unlimited funds to prosecute you with. Right. Is that Was that part of your influence to taking a plea then, right away? No. no yeah, that, well, it was... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, so. yeah, part of it, yes. So it's just going on with the, the justice system is so twisted um, with what's fair and not fair. You know, it's not a little playing field when it comes to being able to defend yourself. If you don't have the money, like I said, you're, you're, it's game over with. Like I said, OJ proved it. You know, you can go around killing people and pay 10 mil and you're a free man. Yeah. You know. Um, what, what message would you like for people to know about you? You know, you know this is the first time you and I have met. Uh, yeah, a lot of people they don't see the person. They they only see the actions and only then interpret it as uh, mainstream media would give it to them. What would you tell the average American of what we're facing right now? What make you stand in the gap? You know, what, like I said, what got me into this? I don't want to try to sound so over patriotic or corny if I can help that, but 
being influenced by Ronald Reagan as much as I was as I said, growing up, um, you know, Americans have got to learn if we want to maintain our freedoms and our liberties, you know, you've got to pay a price of blood for it. It doesn't come free. Nothing ever in life is easy. Sacrifice. Ever. Yeah, the, you, you, like the voice book. That's an awesome book. I read. Yeah, I read the voice book too. It was mailed into me by blood and suffering. Yeah, only by blood yeah, and suffering. exactly. And the thing but it is, you know, freedom isn't free. That sounds like a corny saying, but it's not. And if we don't, if we don't want this country to turn to a socialist communist state, we need to start ending up as Americans and do something about it. That's, think, that's, that's just the bottom line right there. Because, you know, if, if, if the rest of America loved America as much as I did, and the rest of us were there, I think we'd have a much dearer outcome. I think I agree. Becky Wells says hi to you. Can I throw one thing in there? Yes, you may. Protect our veterans, free Jerry DeLemus and Tom Angle, everybody else. Dwayne Eber, Dwayne Eber, Ritzheimer, God bless them. Free our patriots. And also, I do want to add this that we're doing the interview in regards to the Bundys. Um, I've discussed this with Gary and a few others, I think. I uh, mentioned it because I, you know, I don't know what their feelings are anymore after all this has been said and done, but um, I just don't want Clyde or Carroll or Ham and Ryan to think after like Bunkerville what they started there. They didn't start, the federal government did. It's not their fault. We did this on our own. You know, they, we did this on our own anyway, but once, I don't want Clyde or any of them to think that uh, because of what's happened and had all the way they got involved that, you know, they feel bad or guilty like they've ruined somebody, one of our, our, our lives or mine. And I have, like I said, I have no regrets in what, for what I did. The government did this. Obama did this. This was perpetrated by the by the feds. I don't blame Clyman. Clyman did the right thing and stood up. Absolutely. You know, I, I think the Bundys are some awesome Americans. I, I, I do too. I gotta agree. I I I'll, I'll never ever Ryan ever Bundy say for the, <laughs> Ryan Bundy for governor. Ryan Bundy for governor. Ryan for governor. But I would I would I would never say a bad thing about any of the Bundys. As far as I'm concerned, they're some of the greatest Americans I've ever met. I got so, agree. And I just, I, you know, I, I don't want them to think I have any ill feelings. I did this on my own free will. I did this because I wanted to do this. I wanted to help my fellow Americans out and do a positive change in this country. This okay. has nothing to do with putting blame on anybody. I did this on my own free will. Sally Telford says, God bless you. And uh, I see Josh on here, Joshua Martinez, another great American. Love you, brother. Uh, I, I'm very proud to, to be standing with... Uh, such great people, and I really do feel like a peanut in a Snicker bar, all the Snicker bars, and uh, very proud to meet Corey and uh, they'll get him to bring on, uh, come on and be able to to show he's a regular person like uh, like uh, most of us are, and and has a true and sincere heart for uh, defending the values of America. What, what we suppose them to be, what we remember them to be. And uh, again, uh, th thanks, Corey. I appreciate you coming on. And, You're welcome. Uh, I'm going to let you close out and say anything you'd like to You shout out, especially uh, Jason Patrick, great man, uh, Ryan Payne. I, I got to uh, meet him and see him a little bit after his release here in Vegas. Uh, just so many great people. Uh, would you like to... Yeah, these are, to me, these are the greatest people I've been around, especially Ryan Payne, most of all, Ritzheimer, Dwayne Eamer, all these guys. Um, I did quite a few guard shifts in the beginning with Dwayne, and uh, we chewed some of the same ground together in the Army and stuff. And, nice. Um, he's the same age as me. You know, we're old. So, But, uh, you know, I, you know, I, to me, I think this is the greatest service. And I remember Ritzheimer used to say it, too, this is serving our country. For the first time, I actually felt like I'm really serving my country. Instead of the corporate America? Yeah, instead of...